Not a lot of people are familiar with the Canadian-born singer-guitarist Jerry Doucette. I guess most people here in the States who has heard of him would most likely consider him a one-hit wonder with the catchy song Mama Let Him Play. And even at that, this song just broke into the Billboard Top 100, debuting at number 88 and never reaching higher than number 72. It hung around there for about eight weeks before falling off and out of sight. The song did go platinum in Canada, selling over 100,000 copies in 1978. And him and his band won the Juno Award for the most promising group the following year. So why am I doing a video on him, since he wasn't that big of a name here in the States? I guess because I think he deserves it. Being fortunate enough to live close to St. Louis and having what I consider one of the greatest rock and roll radio stations in range, KC95, I probably heard more Doucette songs than the average rock fan. Casey had a tendency to not only play a top hit of the day, but if someone put out a good album, they would play some of the other cuts too, if the artist was worth it and the songs had some good teeth, and Jerry Doucette was definitely worth it and many of the songs on his albums were very good. So if this sounds interesting, Let's kick back and see what we can do to find out a bit more about this guy. I can assure you of this, there was a little more to him than just being the singer, songwriter, and vocalist of that song Mama Let Him Play. Let's take a quick look back on Jerry Doucette. Jerry was born in Montreal, Canada, September 9, 1951. His family relocated to Hamilton, Ontario, and sometime after that, he started playing a guitar his father bought him when he was about six years old. He played in bands in his early teens off and on until age 21, when he moved over to the Pacific Coast around Vancouver, British Columbia. He joined a band called the Seeds of Time, and after that, a band called the Rocket Norton Band. He was by then writing his own songs and becoming very proficient at the guitar and as a singer. After that, he ended up signed to a solo record deal with Mushroom Records and started recording under his sure name, Doucette. He recorded his first album titled Mama Let Him Play. His first single from the album was the song Down the Road. Made the top 30 in Vancouver in February of 1978. His next release was the biggest hit single, Mama Let Him Play. The story I read said that when Jerry was young and practicing guitar, his father, who worked swing shifts, was home from work relaxing, and his mother told him to stop playing the guitar as his dad was trying to get some rest. And his father said, It's okay, let the boy play. Jerry heard that and thought it was a great line for a song. He said when he sat down to write the song, it all came out in about an hour. True or not, who knows? And I'm sure there are a few varied versions of this story out there, but it sounds reasonable, and if Jerry said so, then I'll buy it. No matter how it was wrote, Jerry did it, and the song took off up in Canada, peaking at number seven in Vancouver, number six in Saskatoon, number nine in Springfield, Manitoba, and number 16 in Ottawa. In the fall of 1978, Doucette released the single from his debut album, all I Want to Do, while he extensively toured across the United States. Doucette was the opening act for various headliners, including Meatloaf, Bob Welch, Eddie Money, and Bob Weir of The Grateful Dead. As I said, local radio station KC95 in St. Louis really got behind that album, and Jerry made a few trips through St. Louis in 1978. He was opening shows for the Meatloaf Eddie Money Tour and played there for a Valentine's Day concert at the Big Keel Auditorium. And came through again right after that, opening up for Bob Weir at the Fox Theater, a smaller venue with a seating capacity of around 4,000, a great place to hear music. But for some reason, his album didn't really bust out big nationally. I got my own ideas why, and here's what I think. The song Mama Let Him Play was a very good rocker, and even today that song kicks off and people will still get out and dance to it. And the album had a few other decent rock songs on it. But 
The others weren't so much rock. They were way more pop and with an R&B flavor to some. Jerry had a great voice and sang the songs really well. They were produced pretty good, but again, in my opinion, the album had just too many different style songs on it. And it was just too pop for the rockers and too rock for the pop scene. One song, you are wanting to get up and burn the dance floor and sweat, and the next song, you're just waiting to kick back with a cocktail, close your eyes, and groove. It didn't make much difference to me, because I like a wide variety of music. But to someone who is strictly rock, or just pop, or R&B, the album might have confused them just a little. Now the second album, The Deuce is Loose, was a much more straight-up rock album. And I consider it much better and a well-produced album. This is my favorite album of Jerry's. It seemed they had a good grasp of what they wanted to accomplish. But sadly, it might have been just a little too late for Jerry down here in the States, as the album didn't fare all that well. And although this album stayed pretty close to the rock sound, with the exception of a couple of songs, and one of them was a really good blues shuffle called Further Up the Road, and Jerry really did a great job on the song. The album just didn't get going. By then, to support the release of the second album, Jerry was an opening act for the Doobie Brothers tour in the United States. He subsequently opened for tours in Canada with the Beach Boys and the Atlanta Rhythm Section. But Mushroom Records was plagued with financial troubles and the promotion of the Deuces Loose album suffered. Doucette decided to switch labels and sign a contract with Rio Records. However, when his third album, Coming Up Roses, was released in 1981, there was little interest due to the fascination with new wave music. The disappointing sales sent Doucette back to the recording studio, but this time it was as a studio musician. Jerry's run was pretty much over, although he did put out one more album in 1995 titled price of an education. I never got to see Jerry in his heyday, but one time back around 1985 or 86, he came through St. Louis and played a very small venue over in Illinois, just across the river from St. Louis. It was called Stages, and me and a friend decided to go over and check him out. To be honest, I was totally impressed at how very talented this guy was. He's a great entertainer, great vocals, and a very versatile guitarist. A lot of players you go and see after they have come down the ladder a little, and they're out there just to get a paycheck and tend to go through the motions on stage. Not Jerry. This guy, even though there probably wasn't more than maybe 300 people in the place, put on his show and gave the people their money's worth. I mentioned earlier, he put a blues number on his second album. And in the show I saw, he played a couple of old blues tunes, and man, the guy just lit it up. He was one fine guitar player. As he got along in years, Jerry kept playing, but seems he stayed up in Canada for the most part, spent time with his family, and did quite a bit of charity work in and around the Vancouver area. But in 2016, he collapsed before a show, and after paramedics gave him oxygen, he went on with the show. But his health started to decline after that, and in February of 2018, he made this post on his Facebook page. Information was kind of hard to find after that post. It seemed he left social media. And checking out his website, it has no information on it and hasn't been updated in quite a while. Actually, some of it doesn't even work as it is still running a flash player. So it's been a few years since someone worked on it. Any of you friends or fans who can add some more information, please feel free to do so in the comments section. Links to other sites pertaining to Jerry's fine also. I did find some information in a newspaper article on a benefit they had for him. It says, a fundraiser was held in 2018 and Sawasan, 
that's a town close to Vancouver, to help Jerry with his medical expenses following a car accident and the discovery of his heart condition. Jerry passed away in April of 2022 from cancer after spending some time in hospice. He left behind his wife for 43 years, Maggie, five children, and 10 grandchildren. One thing for sure, Jerry Doucette was a very talented musician and entertainer. The proof of that is in his albums and live performances. His voice had a quality all its own, and his pitching was spot on. His guitar playing was very versatile, and he had a great feel for the blues. As I said, he was a lot more than just the guy who recorded the song Mama Let Him Play. So if that's the only song you know by him, then by all means, listen to the whole album and his other albums, especially the second one, The Deuce is Loose. It looked like Jerry had a lot of friends, fans, and a big family. I'm sure they miss him a lot. He seems to have made a big impression on all of them. I know he did on me. Thank you all for watching. Would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel and help it grow. I'll see y'all later.